Right? Hack number one is... No. No! Come on! Hi everyone, Adam Morgan here, architect and founder of Studio RBA and today what we're going to talk about are some tips and tricks just to make your life that bit easier because let's be honest, architecture is hard enough. So let's get straight into it. Hack number one is sleep. There's all just too many messages out there now about the hustle and, and, and doing 18 hour days and stuff like that, it's just it's ridiculous. As a creative, and particularly as an architect, we deal with some really tricky things and to, to not have much sleep at all, it, it doesn't allow you to function properly. So my first tip is to make sure you're getting a minimum of eight hours. We here at uh, RBA, our, our working hours are actually 10 till six as opposed to a nine to five because we do believe that just that, that little extra hour in bed, just it just has you firing on all cylinders. And sometimes, you know, you've got to deal with some really complicated stuff. And if you're not well rested, you're not going to do the best uh, the best job possible. So that's number one. Hack number two is the use of precedence. Now, I should say straight away that I'm by no means suggesting that you plagiarise. Um, as architects and designers, we should always be pushing uh, for, for new, new ideas, new technology and things like that. Um, but what, what what I'm getting at is there's no harm in taking inspiration from the greats. You'll probably notice on our Instagram page that I'm a big fan of Mies van der Rohe. He's become on the backdrop of, of a few of our announcements. And um, I just love his, his, his clean lines, his very deliberate architectural moves. Um, and yeah, as, you know, I'm, I'm very, very, I always get very inspired by, by him and, and, and other greats. Uh, the likes of, again, David Chipperfield, very, very uh, simplistic architecture but it's so powerful um, so I suppose just to get into the precedent and how I use a precedent I always make sure I've got an idea first I always make sure that I'm working to the site my, my process is always to look at the site first if there's an existing building particularly um, always make sure that you're working to that existing building whether you're trying to complement or contrast um, and, and, and try and generate that vision and then from that vision uh, I will then jump onto the likes of Pinterest uh, just to either uh, reaffirm my vision or just, just to add to it. Sometimes when you see how others have executed similar ideas, it, it, it does give you that bit of inspiration. Um, and the reason I touch on Pinterest is because when you click on one example that you like, it then gives you a list of many, many other similar examples. So it's, it's a very powerful tool um, when... It you know you've you've selected the one that you like and it gives you so many other examples. It really focuses your search, and it, it gives clients a very clear idea of where you're taking a design. Sometimes you don't want to overcommit. If it's an ambitious design you've got in mind, try to use those precedents early on to just guide the client into in into sort of jumping on your bandwagon if you like with where you're trying to take the scheme. Uh, as I say, the, the, those those examples that Pinterest give you is is a, it's it's you know it's very useful. And um, a, another tip on the use of precedence is I would suggest that you use less precedence and get under the skin of each of those. Don't use too many precedents because it, because it becomes very superficial then. And it, it, it does just become about the visual. Um, when, when, you, when you're using a precedent, you should really study it and figure out how the architect has arrived at that design. And then you can pick up clues from that to um, improve your own designs, obviously. And the reason why I, I want to sort of introduce the idea of precedence is because I believe as architects and designers, the creation of an idea, of a scheme from a blank canvas, I think it's the most difficult thing that we do. Hack number three is the art of listening um, I've, I've sat in many, many meetings with other architects or, or my seniors or, you know, people like that, even even other professions, engineers and what have you, where they just don't listen. They just, they've got their own agendas and they just want to adhere to that. What I would say is the best architects and where I'm finding success is the ability to listen and transcribe that into a design that the client wants. Uh, again, I've seen it so often where an architect would hijack a meeting 
take over the design process and really ram a design down a client's throat. I would just say, you know, there's there's so many elitist architects out there. It's time for you know for, for us to just be humble, listen to what the client wants, and just just you know just say just deliver what the client wants to the best of your ability. Obviously, you, you can give them suggestions along the way. I, I advise that, but at the end of the day, they're the clients. Uh, nine times out of ten, they do know what they want. So my advice would be to just listen carefully to what they want and do your absolute best to deliver that. Number four is keep it simple. Uh, I, I went through a spell, I must admit, when I was starting out to try and show off how intelligent I was and mix as many ideas as possible as I could. And by by the end of it, you, you, your designs are a mess and you, know, you, you just get nowhere with it. And again, another real really good piece of advice I've picked up along the way is make sure that your designs know what they are and that is born from simplicity. If you just keep your designs simple, make sure that there's, only, there's, there's one or two messages in there. Don't go mad with you know different styles and choices of materials. Keep it simple and you'll be keeping your proposals very effective. Uh, hack number five is Photoshop. If you're not using Photoshop, then you're already miles behind the competition. It's such a powerful tool. I use, I use it for, for, for a lot of things. It's, it's the one program I couldn't do without. Um, whether it's drawing red line boundaries around sites or you know, um, trying to demonstrate some ideas through, through the use of graphics and things like that. Uh, obviously, it, post-producing visualizations, um, even w when you extract SketchUp images, you can really clean it up in Photoshop. So if you're not using Photoshop, I would 100% recommend uh, you get Photoshop. It, 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 the licenses are very reasonably priced now, and obviously there's the student offerings. And um, if, you, if you are a Photoshop user, I would just say just continue to use it, keep looking at tutorials, keep exploring how you can present your ideas using the medium of Photoshop. It's, it's just an incredible tool. Number six is cut the bullshit, basically. Um, I, I, again, I, I, I've done it myself, I've got to admit, I've been guilty of it, where you know, you, you're just trying to, to show off a little bit. Um, you try and show how clever you are, how many degrees you've got, um, and it just doesn't go down well. The, the more humble that you stay in meetings, the more respect you'll actually gain. So that, that'll give you that more attention, and it'll actually give you that bit more control over the clients as well. If you're if you're coming in trying to be the again that elitist architect, um, it, it'll just win you no favors. So just you know, really just keep it simple. There's no need for all the lingo. Um, just just keep it simple. And another one as well, just on the same sort of topic, is don't be afraid to to, to tell people, even in uh, the environment of a meeting, don't be afraid to tell someone that you don't know something. Uh, it actually shows confidence. But also, it's it's so short sighted. I, I've I've been in meetings. I mean, there was there was a point when I didn't know what the abbreviation M and E meant, and I, I I just stopped the meeting and just said, "Sorry, what, what what does that mean?" Because it only benefits you in the long run. So just you know, don't don't be shy of, of admitting that you don't know something, and yeah, just 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 cut the bollocks. This next one, number seven, uh, you'll have seen a post on this uh, a few days ago about being helpful. One thing that I experience just too much of are other consultants who are just not willing to help unless it involves a fee. And I just think that's, that's just a terrible attitude, very short-sighted. Uh, what, what, what I would say was um, just make sure that you are nice at all times. I know sometimes it's, it, it's frustrating when clients are making changes left, right and centre. Just try and stay nice and, and, and remain helpful as well. Um, if, if, if another consultant just needs a bit of advice and it's, and it's for free, just just go for it. it you know, there, there'll be long-term benefits to that. Um, but in the short term, you know, you're, you're making these friends along the way. Uh, the more friends you've got in the industry, the easier your life will become, uh, particularly when it, com be, it comes down to contractors. Uh, if, you've got a, if you've got a few contractors that you're getting pally with, it'll only benefit you when jobs are hitting sites. The, the, they'll be less keen to, to point the finger when there's a mistake. I've had it before where you know I've I've pissed builders off because I've I've tried to turn up on the bounce and thinking I was the big architect, and you know lo and behold, uh, I I made a mistake and they pretty much broadcast it, whereas you know I learned from that and there are other jobs now where you know I, I can recommend my own my own builders or my own contacts, 
and when it hits sight and if there's a, if there's a snag and you you know you, as I say you, you're nice enough with them if there's a little snag they'll contact you directly and you know the clients will be none the wiser basically and you can but, but more importantly for the benefit of the project you, you know the, you and the builder getting on it, it'll, it'll just streamline the whole process when, when a job's on site and it'll only benefit the build. Number eight is SketchUp. It, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a, a, an RBA sort of post, if you like, if uh, we didn't mention SketchUp. It, for me, uh, it sits alongside Photoshop as the most powerful uh, tool we have available to us. Obviously, we've got CAD, and I do appreciate, you know, we are in an age where Revit has become a more popular. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just picking up Revit at the moment, I must admit. The thing that Revit lacks that SketchUp has got is, is that intuition. You can, you know, with SketchUp, you can really create shapes and forms very quickly. You can mold those forms as if it was like clay or something. It's, um, yeah, it's such such a powerful tool. And, and as I say, it's it's so quick and, and intuitive. You can really draft ideas, um, you know, uh, after a few clicks. And you can, you know, bring your clients in at an early stage to give them a sense of, you know, where the design's headed. And another thing that um, I don't think a lot of people do with SketchUp is is use it as a tool to figure things out. So um, I, I've 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 provided a clip in this video uh, just after this hack, which will show how I use SketchUp to design stairs. I am rubbish at figuring stairs out, uh, whether by hand or on CAD. So what I do is I actually model one step, and you know just consult the building regs and check uh, the the riser and the tread, get a get a feel of of, of where I want it to be. And then I will model one step, create a component of it, and then copy it up. And then if if that staircase isn't hitting the, the right floor height, I can just scale it to suit. And when, when I've scaled it to suit, I, I, you know, I know then that me, me riser and me tread are the right size. But I can also start to bring in some 3D people as well um, within SketchUp, just to make sure no one's banging their head, especially if you've got multiple layers, you know, flights of stairs. So again, SketchUp is just an incredibly powerful tool. Obviously, we're doing SketchUp tutorials as well, so keep an eye out for them. Um, but there, there, there are so many out there as well. Just make sure that you're using SketchUp uh, to its you know full capability. Uh, something I kind of go around saying is, if someone says that SketchUp isn't a very good uh, piece of software, it means that they just don't use it properly. Number nine is speed and efficiency. In in our line of work particularly, obviously we've, we've got tons of clients banging the door down uh, for the drawings yesterday, uh, particularly when things are hitting sight. Obviously you've got, you've got contractors who want you know as much information in front of them so that you know it makes the build more efficient for them, which is understandable to be fair. Um, so for this hack, if you like, uh, I'm just I just want to sort of tell tell you guys that. Um, being as quick as possible is is massive for being a successful architect. Um, now, I I used to be terrible for for rushing around. I used to try and impress my employers by uh, you know look look how quickly I produced this, but it was littered with mistakes. So please don't confuse speed for rushing around and, and making loads of errors, because you know that that that'll only cause headaches later down the line. What I mean is the. The, the more streamlined you can you can create your design process and your product you know draw and production process um, the more resolved you can make your schemes so what I've learned from you know inherently being quite quick and um, but as I say Russian what I've learned from that is I, I'm still quick to arrive at the design still quick to uh, produce my drawings the sheets all sort of stuff but then what I do is I buy myself the breathing space to resolve what I have then in front of me. So when I've got the scheme in skeletal form, I will then use three or four days to just sit back, take a breather, maybe print off my drawings and stuff like that, and then just go through it and really refine, 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 um, you know, really resolve the scheme. And I touched on the sort of efficiency as well. Uh, we'll get onto that in, in, in the next couple of hacks actually, but um, the more efficient you become in your processes, the quicker you become as well, which ultimately gives you that breathing space to refine uh, what it is that you know you, you want to refine basically the, the creative process. Number ten, hack number ten is don't do the same thing twice. Now what I mean by that is 
if you're doing a mundane task and the cliches are obviously door schedules and, and toilet layouts and stuff when you're doing them for the first time be sure to create you know a template of these things make sure that as accurate as possible spend the time on your first one make sure you're creating that sort of template out of it and then save that off save a copy off so for the next, when you, you're revisiting the, those same, you know, mundane tasks, the re repetitive tasks, you, you, you'll really streamline it. So what may have took you a, a, a few days the first time around will only take you a matter of hours as you go along because you're creating this library in the background. So with that mentality, you know, I'd say I've, 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 I've been practicing for over 10 years. So I've, I've been creating this library probably for the past five or six. So we've now got a library uh, full of just you know CAD cells on uh, toilets and sink sizes and uh, and and ba you know bathroom layouts and kitchen layouts and doors and windows and all that sort of stuff. So as I say, just create those templates, create those libraries right now. You know, start right now. Um, you know, wh when when you go back to work on on Monday or you know you you doing a night or tonight when you're at uni, you know do, doing your coursework or whatever. Yeah. Um, Start to create those libraries and uh, anything you're downloading from 3D Warehouse, for example, for SketchUp, make sure you're downloading it and you're filing it away properly because you will need it again. If you need it now, you'll need it again. So, as I say, you, you're not doing the same task twice, particularly the mundane stuff. Um, one final point I want to touch on with, with this in mind is when you streamline the mundane tasks, it actually frees you up to do the more creative tasks. We want to be spending more time on the design, the blank canvas, the sketches, the, you know, getting the clients excited, the presentations and stuff. We want to be focused on that sort of stuff. Let's be honest, we don't want to be sat drawing toilets for the rest of our lives. So, you know, as I say, save those libraries off, save those CAD blocks, 3D warehouse uh, downloads, that sort of stuff. Create this library in the background and it'll only benefit you, benefit you for the future. Number 11, again, sort of relates to speed and efficiency and what have you. Um, and it's understanding if something feels like it's taking too long, then you're probably doing it wrong, basically. Um, again, you, see, you do see it with the with the graduates and stuff who've only got a basic knowledge of, of certain software, whether it's AutoCAD or, or SketchUp or, or, or what have you. What, you. what you see them doing is the, the, the just, they're just stuck in what they know so they're not using the right tools, for example, they're not using like trim tools in AutoCAD or they're not using components in SketchUp. And what what my advice for the, the, this this hack, if you like, is take the time in in understanding the, the particularly the software that's in front of you, and take the time to to understand, you know, how you can make your drawn process or the modeling process. Uh, just a bit more, you know, simple for you. You know, as I say, as an example in SketchUp is, if you've got a very, you know, very repetitive building and it's all the same window. Well, once upon a time, I would have just, you know, put all those windows in one group, and if there was a change, I would have had to edit every single one. Whereas if you create a component or an instance of that first window, you're only making a change to one window then, and you're obviously editing uh, the whole building, and you know, very very quickly, and. That type of philosophy, that component, the instance, um, every you know piece of kit that an architect uses, that that kind of method, it does exist in in, in every piece of software. So, um, I would say just take the time to understand what's in front of you, and just make sure that you're you're going to say you're making that drawn process um, more efficient. And as I say, the core of of this hack is. If you're sat there and you're doing a task that feels like it's going to take hours, take a step back, do a Google search, and just see if there's a quicker way. Number 12, nearly there, um, is lists. Now, this this relates to absolutely everyone who's, who's a designer, to be honest. We've always got so much, so much on our plate. And I've got, you know, got to admit now, particularly... Uh, in setting up full time I mean we're only about I think 14, 15 weeks old as a firm and I, I've got to-do lists coming up my ears basically and you know I, I just need them otherwise I would I would just forget whether it's replying to an email or you know just finishing off you know a building regs pack or something like that um, you just need a good to-do list and what, what I would recommend is just crack open Microsoft Word or something like that or a notepad 
and um, just do a list maybe for the week and and then you know print that off and just you know strike through it and, and try and put it in order of um, difficulty as well what what I try and do is at the start of the week when I'm a bit fresher I'll do the more difficult tasks at the start of the week and then get to the easier ones as you get closer to Friday um, and, what, and what it does is when you've got a list in front of you and you find that you're striking things off it just it just gets rid of that anxiety um, I'm terrible for having that bit of anxiety where you know almost like you know being overwhelmed at the amount of tasks that are in front of you so when you've got a list and you're crossing things off, just gives you that confidence that you are completing uh, all the tasks that are ahead of you, particularly for that week. Um, and one f- one final little um, extra sort of mention on this one is in in my situation where I say you're you're a really small business and you're trying to take on you know pretty much everything um, from from YouTube to all the way down to you know designing the website or what have you. Um, it it try and organize your days into projects as well so I, I you know we've got we've got three or four big projects on and, and about you know five or six little ones so what I try and do is I'll try and put a big one and a little project um, in, in each day just to make sure again just gives you that focus and just alleviates that sense of anxiety and feeling overwhelmed with just the million and one things you've you've got to do that week number 13 is simply there's no better form of networking than doing a good job um now what i mean by that is obviously you know as, as you get more senior maybe in your firm or if if you do uh, find yourself lucky enough to, to set up your own practice which i'd recommend by the way um if if you find yourself in those sorts of positions where you're going to these networking events they are brilliant i mean you, you do meet some real decision makers at those events but at the end of the day if you're not doing a good job you'll never get a repeat client and um, obviously on the back of doing a great job your clients will be doing the networking for you they'll be getting that message out there so at the moment I've got to admit I am struggling to get to networking events and things because I've got I've got so much on my plate but I am finding that I'm getting repeat clients and uh, those clients are putting me on to just other guys you know whether it is just someone who's, who's got a, you know a house somewhere who's uh, we've extended it and you know maybe a, a, a competing neighbour or something that's so who, who was the architect if we done a good job on that they'd be happy to recommend us if we done a terrible job on it obviously they wouldn't so ultimately um, the, the core really in getting your message out there is just doing a good job focus on your product never lose sight of you know being the best architect possible delivering the best package you know as i say every single time don't don't turn your nose up at any type of job do the best job possible and your name will soon get out there and last but not least hack number 14 is appreciate how good you've got it um it is a i, I do find myself in a very privileged position um you know being my own boss and obviously you know working on such such good projects that you've you've obviously seen on on our instagram page um yeah i just i just count myself so lucky and that attitude translates in, in into my design where you know I'm I'm not shy to maybe put an extra couple of hours in if I have to to just hit these deadlines. Um, and as I say, yeah, just other than other than the, the sort of cliche ambitions of you know being a, a, a professional athlete or a um, or, or a musician or what have you, um, I I do think uh, being an architect is is the best job you can have, and. You know, I have come across some guys uh, in my time who, um, you know, almost like took it for granted a little bit, like like it was a it was a job. You know, it was just like a weekend job in a shop or something. Um, you know, you, you'll never go far with that attitude. You, you know, you, you'll you'll never be able to do the mundane tasks of the the aforementioned door schedules and stuff. The when you find yourself feeling grateful for being an architect. Um, and, and you know, as I say, feeling lucky with with the the projects that you're working on, um, it, it'll only benefit you in the long run. And you know, they, they say don't they about you, you know, before you die, you should leave a, a legacy or something like that. And there's there's no better legacy really than designing a masterpiece and having it built. I mean, come on, you know, I, I, how lucky is that to be in a position like that? And um, I suppose one thing I just want to finish on is a, a good friend of mine uh, said something on the week as well, and it really stuck with me. 
there's no such thing as a bad job it's just a bad attitude and I think just change your mindset if you are doing a, a, a crap job like a, a door schedule or something still still try and appreciate how, how good of a position you find yourself in and it'll just change your mindset give you that little bit more positivity and as I say that'll only benefit you in the long run the more positive you are seen in the office it'll it'll help you progress through that company and ultimately you know you might find yourself in in, in a position like myself where um, you can set up your own practice as I say I, I feel like I'm absolutely living a dream at the moment so I, I, I totally recommend setting up your own practice but in order to get to this position you need, you need to do the best job possible at all levels and in all facets of what we do so thanks for watching I uh, hope I haven't took too much of your time out your day and any questions just leave them in the comments section if you want to have a quick look at our, our library that I mentioned as well um, I, I'll be happy to distribute that I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not greedy with any sorts of things I, I was never one to hide my answers in exams and stuff like that so if you want to tap into you know our, our library our database and things like that don't be shy you know, our email is available on um, on the Instagram page so please get in touch get involved and uh, yeah we'll, you know, we'll probably do a few more of these so keep in touch and I'll see you soon cheers